Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello there everyone and welcome to this guide on Windwalker Monk in 8.3. This guide will cover essences, traits, gearing, talents and the playstyle of a Windwalker Monk. Kicking things off with the essences, not much has changed here with the exception of one new essence, known as Breath of the Dying. This essence could be powerful for when you want to pack a bigger punch with burst damage and being able to proc the rank 3 essence of it when you kill tentacles or pets. However, that being said, Conflict and Strife will probably be your main major essence due to it providing an incredible PvP talent which can make you pick other strong PvP talents, making it better overall. It also gives you a bunch of extra versatility, being your best stat, giving you more pressure as well as damage reduction. As for your minor essences, you'll usually choose between Breath of the Dying, Vision of Perfection, Condensed Life Force, and the Crucible of Flame. These all provide decent damage increases, which you can pretty much use any combination of these four, but usually Vision of Perfection and Breath of the Dying will be your staple choices. The new essence, the Formless Void, could also be an option as a minor, but it will depend on the major essences of your partners. If they have major essences such as the Breath of the Dying, Vitality Conduit, or Crucible of Flame, then they can proc this major with you a lot, giving you extra main stat as well as haste. When it comes to Azerite traits, you'll mainly want to gun for the best major traits, which is having 3 open palm strikes, 1 fury of Zwen, 1 dance of Chi Ji, and 1 glory of the dawn. These all provide big damage increases, with Open Palm Strike being the best overall, as it does an incredible amount of damage in both single and multi-target situations. It's even stronger in PvP due to playing with Turbo Fists, which allows you to get even more pressure when cleaving with your Fists of Fury. As for the minor traits, the only one that is of significant value is Exit Strategy. This gives you a reduced cooldown on your roll most of the time, allowing you to have more mobility with your rolls throughout the game. Apart from that, you can use the other healing traits in this tier, but they aren't of too much value and are less mandatory compared to the major traits mentioned earlier. Gearing your character remains an important part of PvP, so gearing your character to the best you can will help your arena performance. Your stat priority remains the same, going for versatility, then mastery, even haste and crit last. You basically want to stack as much versatility and mastery as possible, sticking to this priority. Trinkets are also a big factor of arena games, as they can provide great offense or defense depending on which ones you use. Ideally, you'll have access to the following PvP trinkets, as they can all be beneficial for different uses, changing which ones you use depending on certain matchups. The emblem is usually a favorite for Windwalkers, as it can be used as a lifesaver, increasing your HP, which can also increase your reverse harm healing on yourself, thus making it easier to live against teams you struggle to live against. You can also use it offensively, increasing your reverse harm damage, as well as your touch of death damage, allowing you to slay your targets if you don't need it defensively. It increases touch of death damage by a ton, making it easier to force defensive cooldowns with your touch of death. Outside of the PvP trinkets, there are two very powerful PvE trinkets that you should aim to get, as you'll probably at least use one of them always, if not both. These are the Rifen segment of Drestagath and the Remote Guidance device. The Rifen segment is currently the best trinket, as it provides an absurd amount of burst on a low cooldown that's also not affected by the global cooldown, meaning you can use it with other abilities at the same time. The remote guidance device is also powerful, but a bit less due to it being a 2 minute cooldown as well as not being instant burst. However, it remains a very solid trinket and should be taken if you want even more burst damage. Corruption gear will also be a vital part to gearing your Windwalker. The best corruption gear to have as a Windwalker will mainly be Infinite Stars, Gushing Wounds, Twisted Appendage, Lash of the Void, Versatile, and Surging Vitality. Infinite Stars will be the main one you want to get, as it can deal a high amount of damage based on the item level, which can only be dispelled away. Gushing Wounds provides a big amount of extra damage, which is based on item level 2, 
However, it costs a very low amount of corruption, being easy to maintain throughout your gear. Twisted Appendage is also a nice extra boost that can deal with a bunch of extra pressure at a high corruption cost. However, due to the Breath of the Dying Mage Essence, this corruption could easily backfire as they can kill the tentacles with the Reaping Flames and then crush you with it. So be careful when using this corruption. Lash of the Void can also deal an incredible amount of damage with low corruption, similar to Gushing Wounds. However, it's not a random drop from gear, as it comes from Raden from the new raid, making it a bit more reliable to farm for. When it comes to normal talents, your standard talents will look something like this, which has stayed the same prior to 8.3. There are some situational talents that you can use, depending on what you face. Eye of the Tiger is mainly taken if you are against rogues or druids. This is because it can put a dot on your target that can't be dispelled, which makes having stealth resets harder to achieve for both classes. Good Karma can be a nice option if you can't make much usage out of your Ring of Peace and you want extra self-healing against teams that are difficult to survive against. This could be the case against Demon Hunter teams where Ring of Peace isn't as useful or Wizard Cleave matchups if you want mana win conditions. When fighting against heavy melee cleaves, you could opt for Dampen Harm instead of Diffuse Magic, as Diffuse Magic may not be useful in comparison, making it a stronger defensive cooldown in this scenario. Zwen the White Tiger will be a niche talent pick, but it can be a nice one to take. If you're against double DPS in 2s or have a high paced 3v3 matchup, then this talent could give you more damage in such a short game. It can also keep you in combat in its duration, making it good in my opinion against Rogue Mage in 2s. The last situational talent being Serenity, which has become more popular mostly against teams with plenty of rooting spells. This is so you have an offensive cooldown doing more effect compared to the images that may be in too much crowd control, although you'd only pick this talent if you purely rely on your Serenity windows to help you win the games. As for PvP talents, all of the following PvP talents could be taken in 2v2 or 3v3 games. The only mandatory one that you will pick 100% of the time is Reverse Harm, as it's absurdly powerful. It gives you a ton of extra damage and healing, as well as more versatility throughout an arena match, making it vital for Windwalker gameplay. Ideally, you want to use this ability on cooldown and on a player that lacks 8% of their HP, so you can maximise the damage and healing of this spell. Turbo Fists will be taken nearly all the time, being excellent against any melee or in cleave situations, giving you a ton of extra damage. Alpha Tiger will be a prominent talent in 3v3 for extra pressure or against unholy DKs or classes with pets, being able to proc your haste buff more often, giving you a bunch of extra damage throughout the game. Your main goal with this talent is to try and keep the buff up as much as possible by rotating your tiger palms on different enemies. As for the rest of the talents, they will also be more situational and may depend on the needs of your team against the current opposition. Fortify and Brew can be quite a popular pick, especially if you need an extra defensive against teams that can take you down swiftly, such as Rogue Mage or a Jungle Cleave. You could also use it aggressively for your touch of death goes if the enemy team decides to not go for you. Ride the Wind is very niche, rarely being used, but it can make the difference in some matchups. Ride the Wind can be nice for partners that are less mobile, allowing them to kite classes such as DKs with relative ease. If against high armor targets that are difficult to kill, then you could opt to play Tiger Eye Brew to increase your killing potential against these classes. You want to activate this during a Fist of Fury channel, as it doesn't cancel the cast and can make the most out of your globals. Using it with a lot of stacks will make the buff last longer, allowing you to slaughter your foe rapidly. Last but not least, Grapple Weapon is an immensely powerful defensive cooldown against most melee, which can be used to peel big damage or stop offensive setups. Using it on melee in this way will negate most of their abilities, not allowing them to keep up with pressure or use crowd control as they They'd like to. When it comes to your rotation, it's important to know how to deal max damage, both passively and during burst windows. During your normal rotation, you want to maintain your snare on your target, which should be easy as it reapplies with your melee damaging abilities. The main thing you want to achieve for maximum pressure is using your reverse harm, rising sun kick, fists of fury, and whirling dragon punch on cooldown. This also ties into your burst damage, as you want to have these abilities ready in order to deal tons of damage during your offensive cooldown. Bursting during your cooldowns will deal crazy damage, allowing you to force big defensive cooldowns if you pull it off properly. 
Make sure to use your powerful abilities during this time in order to get the max value out of your burst cooldowns so you can get defensive cooldowns or kills much easier. During most games in both 2s and 3s, you'll need to play Windwalker in a certain way. These play styles may vary on how much you have to perform them depending on the composition you play and play against. These play styles involve doing big burst damage goes, stopping crowd control, kiting well if needed, and disrupting the enemy casters or melees. Half of doing big burst offensive maneuvers was mentioned earlier by doing your burst damage as a windwalker. The other half is to have crowd control on the enemy healer so that you can solidify kills during your offensive setups. You should use your toolkit paired with your partner's toolkits in order to do this reliably. In this example I use a paralysis on the shaman whilst bursting down the shadow priest. I follow this up by teleporting on the shaman, landing my interrupt on him. I chain this with a double leg sweep on the shaman and the shadow priest, which forces their trinkets, but since he's very low on HP and my lock lands a counter spell on the shaman, we were able to land a kill. When it comes to stopping crowd control, this will depend on the composition you play and play against, as some teams need to be stopped more than others. Either way, it's important to do this whenever it's needed. You can stop normal crowd control on yourself, but it's important against heavy crowd control teams to stop crowd control chains on your healer. Otherwise, this can easily lose you the games, especially against compositions such as Rogue Mage or MLD. Use any tools you have to stop crowd control chains so that you can break your healer from crowd control, allowing them to keep your team alive. Here, for example, during a blind on my priest, I know the rogue or the mage will usually want to follow up with a sap or a sheep. So I use my leg sweep on both of them, negating them from the crowd control as blind is about to end, allowing my priest to be out of crowd control and continue playing the game, keeping me alive as well. The good and the great windwalkers are separated from their ability to kite well in arena games. This involves great usage of not only your tools, but your mobility as well, in order to kite when needed. Against rogues, you can take a lot of pressure if they maintain uptime, and can be hard to live against if your healer is in crowd control. I trinket a kidney shot in order to stun the rogue whilst the enemy paladin is landing a repentance on my healer. By rolling away and dispelling myself, I can now heal myself decently well and avoid pressure from the rogue. I used paralysis on the rogue but it breaks, however I still bought me enough time to survive well during the crowd control chain of my healer. Now windwalkers are known to have an incredible amount of disruption against both melees and casters. This allows them to stop the enemy from playing the game they want. You can use your toolkits to stop casters from casting as well as peeling melee relentlessly denying them uptime. Against this warlock, he uses his wall whilst he's low on HP. However, I could still deny his cast by using Ring of Peace, then follow up by a leg sweep to stop his Chaos Bolt cast, denying him any pressure at all. Windwalkers can be a rogue's nightmare if you can peel them well, as seen here whilst my paladin is low on HP with no bubble during a kidney shot. So I paralysis the rogue, stopping his pressure whilst I dispel my paladin and heal him. I then spam root the rogue and give my paladin's tiger's lust, which eventually led to the survival of my paladin, even disarming the rogue as a precaution to make sure he didn't die. That covers everything on Windwalker Monk in 8.3. Make sure to plus skill this guide if it helped and feel free to ask a question or leave a comment down below. I'll see you on the next guide. Thanks for watching.